That belongs in a museum. Keep these minions on the board. That's a big decision point that he's going to have to make. And this is this is definitely the uh, nod to protecting the board position. Top just does not have the damage to follow up if he chooses to remove his Doomsayer. He would be dwindled down into needing, I think it was, eight more damage to close the game if he got max value from all of his cards. Palmblad now has unlocked the Demon Wrath that is going to solo Tom's entire board. He can even tap here! That's insane! Palmblad's gonna be at 19, Tom's gonna have three damage, and he has no cards. And <laughs> gives him a little clap. Bravo, Palmblad, bravo. That Dirty Rat Doomsayer was a wonderful setup for Palmblad. Now yeah. poised to take control without Reno Jackson. Tom, I mean, he's he's seen some things. He's been around the block a few times. I mentioned uh, his his top 10 ranking on Strivewire. Strivewire, of course, a uh, popular site for open cups, uh, which is where a lot of players do their grinding. You know, grinding for those Hearthstone Championship Tour points. Uh, grinding through, you know, just being able to practice lineups, conquest lineups. He has four top four finishes in the past month, and out of thousands and thousands of players, he's top 10 ranking on Strivewire. So he's played a ton of conquest lineups. He's seen the craziest of Reno hands, and he's seen the worst of Pirate Warrior hands. And uh, the biggest thing for, hi for him here is just to keep calm. Well, it's a little bit weird. So Tom chose to override his Rusty Hook, or rather his upgrade weapon, on the turn he decided to kill Doomsayer. If he just simply pushed all that damage, that would have been nine damage to Palmblad's face. That means this South Sea Captain sticking to the board, plus this Fiery War Axe, plus the Heroic Strike, actually would have killed Palmblad in that instance. So Tom drew about as good as he could have in terms of the damage. Could he have won this game? if he had chosen to take the risk. It's really tough to say, you know? And he, you, you either hedge against Reno or you hedge against AoE. And he said, if you don't have AoE, I win. And Pop Black needed Hellfire or Demon Wrath in that scenario. Or Kazakus for a one mana potion. Would have done it as well. To deal two damage to all would have been as well. Would have been a risk though. Yeah, would have been a risk. And now, double potion. Double potion, probably gonna see I'd one start, drop, five drop? I'd like to start with the one here, and if Palmblad fails to pick up anything relevant, uh, then really consider if he needs a second one. But that's ah, seven armor seven off the armor. first potion, and that'll mean a second... Ah, I'm surprised it doesn't mean a second five-cost potion. There's actually nothing in Tom's deck that he loses to outright, so... I think one drop, five drop is warranted for the situation. You know, after seeing the armor... I agree with you a little bit. Maybe that's that's the case, but... Well, I think he picks up Doomsayer. Okay, More second hand. Well, <laughs> that's going to lock the game. Tom has... Uh, basically zero outs to win at this point. Uh, Palmblad can roll into Ragnos the Fire Lord very safe, knowing that Leroy's gone, knowing that he's got the extra life. Uh, he's got a Kazakus potion to res to and put himself at 16. Tom's going to have to sink two hits into this uh, second-rate bruiser, and the damage is just starting to pile up. Uh, there's there's no way he gets out of this one. Plus, there's the Faceless Shambler to protect himself. Palmblad's got... He's got all the aces. With, with 12 damage on board, he's not on a two-turn clock. So he could reasonably attack him with Arcanite Reaper next turn, draw an Arcanite Reaper, and draw four extra points of damage, and win if Palmblad has zero defensive cards and zero minion pressure in his hand. Now, Palmblad has a lot of defensive cards. This is Doomsayer. I, that was a risk that I don't think Palmblad needed to take. At nine life, he is 100% safe. He could have just played Faceless Shambler. Put another taunt on the board, some extra power. This risk was very unnecessary from Palmblad. I think he could have just had 100%. Ooh, that is life tapping. This is. This is weird. very strange. This is weird. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie. This is really weird. And Tom, that's a blessing. I still don't think. That Palmblad could lose unless he just decides to really throw this game away. Uh, but he's got plenty of defensive tools yeah. to stabilize here. It, it delays his, his threat is the problem. He's got to start clocking. That's true. Tom picks up weapon. Is there a life tap? This is very dangerous. I don't think Palmblad needs any more cards to win this game. Now he's considering the trade, and rightfully so. The sacrifice, rather, for that card. 10, 13 damage, 3 damage oh off Oh my lethal. goodness. 
Oh. For Tom. But I think that seals it. With Hellfire and Blast Crystal Potion in hand, Palmblad's able to just completely clear the board. Palmblad's just smacking his face, though. He's a fairly small pool at that point. Resurrect is usually like an automatic choice for a lot of players. Please, they're so used to being really good, but you have, you have to decide. Tom's cooked up the answers here, and it's Palmblad life tapping again. With the, and with the way that he's been playing, I don't think that's outside the range of possibility right now. His only out is Mortal Strike, but Mortal Strike gets cut into simply by the Mistress of Mixtures trading in. And the Earthen Ring Farseer gets drawn. So Palmblad should simply focus on a, on a full clear here and deliver that damage. Right. Right, I like the Blast Crystal. Now, this is a risk though. Tom has a Mortal Strike. Palmblad set up Tom what? to draw Mortal Strike and win. Tom draws Mortal Strike, the game's over. Oh my goodness. Palmblad is, is he's struggling here. You can tell the pressure's getting to him. This guy does not normally play this way. No. And this is probably the biggest match of his life. He's just playing cards. Tom has a smile on his face because he knew he had an out to win. That is crazy. Well, he can still stay alive for another turn from his perspective. He plays the Blood Cell Cultist. If he gets traded off by Palmblad's minions, then he goes to nine from the Mistress of Mixtures, he goes to 11 from the armor out. So that would force three more damage from Palmblad at that point. He has that. But Tom's looking at this going, I have another draw to win the game when my opponent can't clear this. Wow. And that'll seal it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he... I, I don't know what he... He's trying to figure out a way to guarantee lethal in the spot. He Jaraxxus and then tacks with his minions. I agree. That's 100% lethal. I agree. But he's, it's very clear the pressure's getting the palm blad at this point. And I've known competitors this has happened to on main stage. Uh, one of the ones that comes to mind very vividly to me, I'm sorry to call Noxious out on this one, but uh, Noxious at WCA in China in 2014, there was a moment on stage where he just blanked out and it effectively skipped his turn. And, and you're not used to spotlight you're not used to these high pressure situations you can fall victim to yourself and he knows it 